Hello, so I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. This is another video in the series about the Cloud Resume Challenge. In today's video, we'll be talking about DynamoDB. We won't be doing a great deal with DynamoDB itself. We'll just talk about what DynamoDB is and how to set it up. So we will create our resource in our template and get that deployed into AWS so that we can come back in a subsequent video and actually do the updates into the database so we can have our visit account showing on our website. It's gonna be a fairly quick video for today. So let's jump straight into it. DynamoDB is basically, it's a NoSQL database from AWS. It is a sort of proprietary database from AWS. You can't have it sort of self-hosted anywhere else. You have to use it with AWS. So it's kind of a little bit coupled with AWS itself, but uh, that's one of the trade-offs that you make when you're working with Dy DynamoDB. And generally speaking, DynamoDB is also, it's good for high availability. So large amounts of traffic at DynamoDB, it's, uh, its main use case is that it, it scales really well. In our particular use case, it's not at relevant that uh, the DynamoDB scales like it does. If you've got a use case where you need sort of a high degree of scale, and especially if you're working with something like serverless, DynamoDB and serverless go really well together. So that's just a bit of an introduction about DynamoDB. And yeah, basically it's very, it can be simple to get started with DynamoDB because it's schemaless. So because it's schemaless, it basically means that you don't have to define your data types up front. So with like a relational database, for instance, what you'd have to do is set up your entities. So let's say if you had a database with like users and usernames and accounts and things like that, you'd have to define up front and say, I want a table with users and a table with usernames. And you'd have to define, you know, a username is a string of a certain length, uh, this kind of thing. But with DynamoDB, you basically don't have that. It's entirely schemaless. With great power comes great responsibility because it can be very simple to get started, but it's deceptively complicated. Getting really good at DynamoDB is a bit of an art. It's just as much of an art as sort of uh, relationship modeling in uh, in a SQL type database would be. I think a lot of people give uh, a lot of credit to people that do a lot of relational databases and you know setting up all those entities. But I think setting up a DynamoDB at scale uh, with the right schema is also just as difficult, if not probably potentially more difficult than it is with a relational database. Two other resources that I just wanted to mention, obviously, because you can get started for the Cloud Resume Challenges purpose. You can get started on Dynamo DynamoDB pretty quick. But uh, if you wanted to look into it a little bit more, two resources that really I'd recommend for you, which is so you've got the DynamoDB book there, which is by uh, a guy called Alex Debris. That one's really good. I've actually got that here on my Kindle. So I downloaded a PDF of that one as well. Uh, can you see that? Yep. Uh, so I've got that myself as well. I'm chewing through that and it's really good. Uh, it's, it's a great little book. I uh, would recommend it. I think I bought that one off Gumtree. Uh, I think I paid something like $20 for it, but I was happy to, to support Alex as an independent person. So go and check that out. And also uh, Rick Houlihan. So there's a bunch of AWS reInvent talks about DynamoDB as well that you can find. They're just up on YouTube. Um, in fact, I can quickly just show you one of those as well. Here you go, I've just got one up for you here. So there's a bunch of reInvent talks about DynamoDB and they're worth watching as well. Uh, it's, it's one of those topics as well where it makes sense to like actually dive in, have a go, play around with it. I think they'll watch some of the videos and you kind of get some of the concepts. I think if you just uh, listen to it, uh, surface value, it probably could be quite overwhelming uh, thinking about all the different the topics and all these weird key names and uh, and structures and setups and things like that. But yeah, so in terms of today, then it's going to be quite a simple task, actually, because all we need to do is create our DynamoDB table. Uh, because I said there's no schema, so we don't need to set up any schema. One thing we just need to set up is the ID for our table. As I said before, so our DynamoDB works really well in terms of high availability. So how you set up your table is going to matter in sort of high scale uh, situations or if you need your database to perform in a certain way. But for today's purposes, uh, we don't need any of that. I mean, it's a very, very simple table that we're gonna define here. Uh, so we've got a AWS DynamoDB, we're gonna set a table name, which is the Cloud Resume Challenge in this case. We're at billing mode. This is a required field and here we're saying pay per request. So basically this is on-demand billing. So we're basically just saying that we want to pay uh, every time a request comes in, the other option for that being provisioned, uh, the trade-offs between provisioned and pay per request is basically if you're provisioned, you kind of know what kind of traffic you're going to get. So you can have a set number of resources, which might be cheaper, uh, might make more sense in certain circumstances, but the simplest mode is just this uh, pay per request. And then what we're gonna do is basically gonna set up our key, which is these properties here. So within the key schema, we've got an ID, which is of type hash. Uh, and obviously you can have a look into these hash keys and what that means. And also we're setting up here an attribute definition. And this is basically just the same, uh, the same ID, the same property, we need both of those. So if I go ahead and just copy that, I'm just gonna nip into our template file, uh, add it in. So just paste that in there, DynamoDB table. I'm gonna jump over into my terminal 
and I'm just going to deploy that now. So this is deploying again with AWS SAM. And what I'm hoping to see here is the Delta showing me that it's going to create that resource. Let me just put in my password. Okay, off it goes. One thing when that's going, I should see also within CloudFormation, uh, the reflection in here when the stack starts to update. Okay, so now it's creating. And uh, let's do a quick refresh here. So we've got update in progress. And uh, let's have a look at our resources uh, effect. So create on a DynamoDB. And we've got a DynamoDB table, which is creating. The tables are actually very quick to create. Uh, unlike some of the other resources in AWS, they come up pretty quickly. Okay, so it wasn't too bad. It did go up uh, maybe in about 20, 30 seconds. So let's give a quick refresh on that. And then there we go. So we see we've got our DynamoDB created. Let me go into the actual DynamoDB page within AWS. And let me do a quick refresh. Cloud Resume Chance. So I've got my table there. And I've got my partition key. You just saw that with the ID. and at the moment, I've got nothing in, in my database at the moment. I could go ahead and I could create something in here if I wanted to. Example, go ahead and hit save. And that's going to add that in now. So now we've got a single record in my database. Dead simple database setup. Uh, no real no real schema set up there. But that's now ready for us to add our count values into it and start to, to integrate our API. So we've got that API from before. We'll now integrate with that with DynamoDB and we've got an actual stateful API returning some data. Okay, so now you have the Dynamo database table set up and in the next video, we'll actually go through and start adding values into that database. But at least we have our Dynamo set up and it's ready to go. So if you're following along, then I'll see you in the next video.